Hello all. In this video I'm going to be talking about uh, installing Wine and specifically uh, Wine 32-bit uh, on a 64-bit machine and to create a Wine 32-bit environment. Uh, Wine is stands for Wine is not an emulator. So this is, assumes that you already have Linux, uh, specifically in this case Arch Linux installed and you know a little bit about uh, partitioning and uh, how to add another drive or and so on and familiar with some of the command line uh, interface so I already have wine installed uh, through whatever distro you're, you're using I, for me it was just a pacman pseudo pacman capital S uh, wine and then it just installs the packages on your distribu the other distribution it might vary on what you may need to install after downloading wine nothing is is configured in your directory uh, yet so another thing I get before uh, moving on is wine tricks and I get the SVN version just because the FTP servers are a little more up to date and again that depends on your distribution in my case it was uh, through uh, the Arch Linux user repository and if you have Yao Art installed you just do Yao Art wine tricks dash SVN all right so with that said uh, a lot of this is command line based so first of all you can uh, do a locate and this is the file we want to edit and you notice here I've already made a backup of wine tricks so we want to edit this file now you can use that in any editor such as G edit or uh, nano or vim or whatever you're using in my case I'm going to use leafpad so it's I'm going to have to run as super user okay so here's the configuration file and it's just a bunch of comments and stuff and uh, so on and what I'm most interested in is the uh, cache directory uh, you don't have to do this if you don't want to however uh, if you have another uh, drive another hard drive or another partition you may want to uh, locate the wine tricks cache folder onto another partition or another hard drive so in this file here if you go down to xdg underscore cache underscore home equals in this string here you just take out the dollar sign home and whatever your drive is in my case I called it slash data that's the name of the drive and then it will create the cache folder once you run wine tricks so I'm gonna save that and close the document so whatever whenever you run like wine CFG like wine config or whatever it will first of all create a dot wine directory um, in your home folder now we're going to discuss how to uh, change that uh, function as well so let's do issue wine tricks core fonts and this will go out to the FTP server I'm going to cancel out of these dialogues for now um, install wine mono and uh, gecko and the installer itself and just you just let it run and you see right there it said warning 64-bit uh, um, operating system basically but you can see that it's downloading if you look closely here core fonts are now in the data.cache directory so that's a separate hard drive on my computer so here's the my main hard drive and here's the other one that's uh, actually a partition but if you unhide you see now it's made a dot cache wine tricks and there's core fonts and it just extracts them to your home dot wine directory uh, windows fonts and you see all the fonts here so if you don't like the dot wine directory in your in that folder all you have to do is just type in rm dash r a tilde a slash a dot wine and press enter and it's gone however it's going to leave a few things behind especially in your home folder so if you press control H in most Linux uh, file managers you can unhide the dot files so under local share applications you see all these wine extension things okay you can safely uh, just highlight these and shift delete to delete them and the mime cache if you look at it it's all wine related so you can delete that 
So to keep this uh, simpler for uh, and shorter for the video is I made some notes here. And here's an example of a 32-bit wine prefix. It's very simple. Wine prefix equals whatever you want to call the directory in your home. That's what the tilde is for. If you want it on another drive, like data, it would be slash data, like that, or whatever you call the drive. So I'll just put that back to, because it's not going to take up too much room, and you can delete them um, on the on the fly if you want to. So this is what we're going to do. It's just a... Uh, I'll put this in the description or in a pastebin. You just copy this line. And again, this folder can be called anything you want. This games 32. It could be window win 32, whatever. So open a terminal, paste that in. And this time I'm going to allow it to install Wine Mono. And uh Wine Mono is actually the uh a .NET version. Um wines.net version and so if you install .net eventually uh, the .net uh, libraries files and stuff uh, this will be uninstalled so it's a little bit of a waste in downloading and installing it but uh, just for the purpose of the demonstration and not to get uh, too confusing on how this uh, works next is this thing called wine gecko and it's basically uh, wines version of Internet Explorer so again I'll install that all right, so there we go. Wine uh, configuration and then home, uh, your username, games32, or whatever you decide to call call it, has been updated. All right, back to the command line. Um, whenever you want to run a wine operation for your new prefix, 32-bit, you have to include this before issuing wine whatever. So let's take a look at the uninstaller and we'll see what's in there. So again, just to save some time, we'll just copy and paste this into a terminal. There we go. Now we can see that Wine Gecko installed as so is Wine Mono. Now since uh, the core fonts we did earlier are already downloaded, that will just be copied over to this new directory. So you just press Enter on there. And you can see it's just copying them over. And again, you can see the data directory, cache, wine tricks, core fonts, and it's been copied to the new directory, uh, game 32-bit. Now for the fun part, if you need to install .NET 3.5, uh, this is quite a lengthy process, especially with the, these files here, the uh, MS XML 3 and the .NET 3.5. .NET 3.5. Just copy this into a terminal first, and then I'll just highlight this first uh, file we need, this one. That's highlighted. And again, I'll uh, put a space there and paste that into the terminal. And something rather interesting happens. First of all, and second of all, <laughs> uh, first of all, it opened uh, the cache directory that I specified. As you can see here, is data.cache, wine tricks. And it's open uh, CNET or, or download.com. So you click download now. Uh, my ad blocker is saying it's blocked because... This site is known for uh, bundleware or whatever you want to call it, but I know it's not going to have it in this. It's only one megabyte to download. So once it's downloaded, close your uh, browser and go to wherever you download it. In my case, it's in downloads. So I'll just take this MSI file and move it into the cache directory. And you just issue that command again. So just arrow key up once. and you'll get the familiar Windows installer and license agreements and so on. You can leave this blank and keep pressing next and finish. All right, next up is the .NET. So I'll just uh, copy this .NET 3.5. I'll clear the screen, uh, arrow key up one, and just after wine tricks here, I'll just paste that in and press enter and it's downloading .NET FX 3.5 and once that's downloaded it'll go out and get uh, the service pack 186 as well as you can see it's downloading here and now it's getting uh, 
another pack and again we go to another website and it's opened uh, another uh, folder in our cache directory and it takes us to this site here and you click download now and then you can wait or uh, it doesn't start click here but it will do the same thing you go to your downloads folder and you just copy it over all right so once you have it copied to your moved actually moved to your cached folder um, just run the script again so just press the arrow key up keep in mind though this can just be a bit of a sliding floor sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't and we've finally gotten to 3.5 so we'll just install and uh, download complete you can now disconnect from the internet and then uh, now it's been installed so we exit and a lot of uh, IO operations are going on and this might continue to uh, yeah it's trying to run uh, the NGEN executable for the runtime optimization I believe I'm not sure if that's a bug or if it should be doing that but uh, .NET Framework 3.5 is installed. So while this is running, you just open another terminal, Control Alt T. So the prefix that you have, and then Wine Server. Press press Tab on that actually to complete, and then a dash K. And hopefully uh, we've killed the server, and it's not going to be keep spitting back messages on us. All right. So let's look at the damage that's been done to our system. <laughs> Uh, games 32 you just right click on it and properties and you see it's a uh, uh, 500 megabytes if you do go to your dot cache you'll see those two files in there from wine so we talked about earlier the uh, dot net wine wines dot net version and wine gecko uh, which is ie however if you run uh, in your environment wine um, on installer, we can take a look at that, and you can see Wine Mono is gone. Um, it's, it was removed during the installation process of uh, the .NET Framework 3.5. And keep in mind, it, there's also a message saying that it's not fully working yet. But I found in the past, when installing certain games, for example, if you don't have uh, Wine the uh, .dot 3.5 installed uh, some functions won't work and you won't be able to actually install the program or even run it so that's why I uh, elected to get the .NET 3.5 in any case you can see uh, you can uninstall these uh, again 3.5 takes forever to uninstall for me I don't know why it just keeps stalling and uh, I'm not sure if that's a bug or not so to wrap this up, uh, we've created a wine 32-bit uh, um, container or bottle, some people call it, and we've uh, reallocated some of the cache files uh, so you don't have to keep downloading them. Uh, say if you want to, uh, something goes wrong with your Linux install and uh, you have to format the drive or something, um, keeping the cache on another folder or maybe a USB drive if you want to try to point it to that, is uh, you don't have to download these again. They're right there, uh, ready for you. Okay? Except for the wine, uh, the two wine uh, files in your home directory. All right, so I hope that helps anybody out there. And um, I know there's been, there's been a lot of problems with uh, certain games and especially 32-bit requirement, a strict 32-bit requirement uh, they won't run if you're not in a 32-bit uh, environment bottle container in wine it uh, they, th those games for example or maybe other programs just don't work all right so that should do it for this one and thank you so much for watching and we'll talk to you soon bye for now